The actor chosen to play the lead in Superman is the best reason to see the movie. I've only seen excer excerpts from the picture, but from friends of mine who have seen it, they say it's a, it's a great picture and a lot of fun. This is the first appearance on The Tonight Show. Would you welcome, please, Christopher Reeve. Chris. <laughs> First of all, congratulations. It's, it's, a, it's a monumental hit, isn't it? Yes, thank God for that. But I gotta tell you something, there's something a little backwards about show business when you have to pay four fifty to see me fly around and a performance like that comes to you free of charge. I think that's just that's all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rodney was Rodney was hot tonight. Wow. What was that thing? Did you like my song? <laughs> 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 He may be Superman, but he may be worth one shot. Yeah. What is that? I wasn't exactly throwing a frisbee around either. Oh, there, you know. oh. Didn't you see Ed's commercial? Sit down. Go. <laughs> the man knows what he's talking about. He's Superman. <laughs> <laughs> he has x-ray vision. He can see through your jokes. Oh. <laughs> oh, I suppose every time you appear someplace, Chris, people expect you to fly in or something and uh, do crazy things. What, what are the stock jokes now you get when people see you? Well, I was what am I wearing, I suppose? Uh, exactly. Well, I, I was on the Today Show yesterday morning at NBC, right. and then after I finished, someone said, would you please come down? to do something on radio, and I got there, I said, listen, I can repair the damage to the roof, no problem, you know? <laughs> you had to come down through, through, stu through two studio floors, right. and uh, that kind of stuff. If I ever get on an airplane, the stewardess says, thank God you're here in case we lose an engine, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know? <laughs> I never get a break, but... You uh, know, there must have been a lot of actors who wanted this part, because it was so highly touted, and the whole, the whole picture with Marlon Brando and Gene Hackman, and a lot right. of good people in this thing. There must have been a lot of guys who wanted it. How did it come about? Oh, they got desperate. I mean, you know, no, come on now. I know that you had to, they wanted you to put on some weight. Yeah. No, they actually, on, on, on day one, they came to me with a complete set of false muscles. Aw, and that was a clip of Christopher Reeve appearing on the Johnny Carson Show alongside his other guest, Rodney Dangerfield, in 1979. I'm Lauren Conlin, and welcome to Pop Crime TV's The Outlier Podcast. My interview in this episode gave me all of the feels. I laughed, I cried, and I really enjoyed speaking to Christopher and Dana Reeve's youngest son, Will Reeve. And Will is an ABC News correspondent, if you didn't know that. He's on Good Morning America all the time. And he was only two years old when his father, Christopher Reeve, got in that awful horseback riding accident that caused him to become a quadriplegic. And Christopher actually passed away on October 10th, 2004, at the age of 52, due to complications from an infection caused by a pressure wound, which is a common issue for people with paralysis. And he was paralyzed from the neck down after the 1995 horse riding incident. But he was an amazing activist for spinal cord injury research right up until his death. And what's so tragic is that Dana Reeve, Christopher's wife and Will's mother, passed away less than two years later on March 6th. 2006 at the age of 44 from lung cancer despite being a non-smoker and she was a huge advocate for her husband's cause she founded the christopher and dana reeve foundation after his death so it is just so sad that will and his siblings alexandra and matthew lost both of their parents in such a short time within each other i really cannot imagine Today's episode, however, is to make you all aware that on October 11th, in theaters only, the new film, Superman, the Christopher Reeve story, will be playing. And I have read and heard amazing things about this film. I mean, it really is supposed to make you cry, laugh feel angry, feel happy, all of the feels. So I cannot wait to see it. I'm a little upset that I didn't get a screener. Usually I do, but I will have to see it in theaters, of course, because I was such a huge fan of Christopher Reeve. Even though I wasn't alive when the movie was made, I watched it. I watched the original and I loved it. And my gosh, was he not so 
handsome. But let's let's talk about Christopher for a second. He clearly was best known for his portrayal of Superman, and he experienced a life changing event in 1995 when he was thrown from a horse during an equestrian competition. The accident left him paralyzed from the neck down, making him a quadriplegic. And despite this devastating injury, Reeve became a passionate advocate for spinal cord injury research and disability rights. And following this accident, he dedicated so much of his life to raising awareness and funds for medical research through the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation. And he also continued to work in the film industry, directing and acting in projects that were important to him. But his resilience and advocacy made him so inspirational to so many, not not only for people living with disabilities, but for the rest of us. I mean, I just look at this guy and I'm like, wow, he really is the real life Superman. He was so strong. Then tragically, a year after Christopher's death, Dana was diagnosed with lung cancer despite being a non-smoker and she publicly announced her diagnosis and she remained uh, a symbol of strength and resilience in the public eye. But then sadly, she passed away uh, in 2006 at the age of 44, which was less than two years after her husband. And Will Reeve, who I'm about to play my interview with, he was only 12 years old at the time. I just, I can't imagine. I mean, my heart just breaks. So in this new movie, there's a lot of home videos and, and all this footage that Will said that he didn't even know existed. So I thought that was very, very cool. And then at the very end of the interview, because I only have a certain amount of time, I snuck in my question about Robin Williams. And oh my gosh, my heart was just so full to learn just how close the two families were. But you'll see. So without further ado, here is my interview with Will Reeve. Hi, Will. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I am so excited for this documentary. I, I'm just a huge fan of your dad. And I have to say, I've watched so many interviews throughout the years and just clips, and it just makes me cry. So I'm a little anxious to watch this because I feel like the waterworks will be flowing. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, I suppose bring your tissues, prepare for an emotional ride, but also prepare to be buoyed by a lot of what's in it. It's, uh, it's a story of love and joy and hope and achievement and triumph over adversity and uh, reaching for the stars, as it were. Um, it's uh, it, It's got every, it's got basically every human emotion you could think of uh, packed <laughs> into an hour and 45 minutes, so. Yeah, you'll yes. cry, but you'll also learn and laugh and all that stuff too. Yes. Okay. I'm ready for it. I've been known to do that. I don't know if that's sociopathic, but I can definitely cry and laugh in the same minute. Um, <laughs> but will oh, you yeah, that's being a human? <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for making me feel better about that. <laughs> uh you were you were two years old when your dad got in in the accident. Is that correct? Yeah, I was, uh, what, 11 days shy of my third birthday. So, yeah. Oh. Two, two, two. Wow. And you, do you, you probably don't have any type of memory of, of that because you were two. I'm sure your, your memories just kind of come flooding in, uh, in the days after. Yeah, I mean, I have, I have like bits and pieces and I think that it's a composite memory that is made of, you know, photos and videos and stories I've been told and coalesced in my brain as a memory. Um, mm -hmm. I do have little flashes of the, you know, the hospital down in Virginia where my dad was in the ICU. And I remember being at Kessler Rehabilitation Institute in New Jersey after he moved there um, when he was wow. stable enough. And what one of the gifts uh, from this process from the documentary being made is getting to see a lot of the stuff that I either didn't know or didn't remember in the yeah. home movies or right. images from the press uh, that, that, that fills in some blanks for me. And I think like my, my brother and sister are older than I am and, and remember that time 
have only told me about the third birthday party that my mom threw for me at the ICU at the hospital where our dad was. It was at a clown. It had everything. Uh, and I don't remember that specifically, but we do have home footage of that day in the documentary. So wow. I got to watch my third birthday party on the big screen. Uh, oh, my gosh. Wow. There. That's amazing. And I was going to ask you that. It must have been just incredible to watch this old footage and, and see how it, it all came together. I mean, you know, just to honor your family and you, you know, you have an incredible family. Your, your mom was just incredible. Clearly your dad was incredible, but you and, and Alexandra and Matthew, you guys are just wonderful people. Um, so I think that, you know, watching this documentary will help people understand who you guys are as well. Or I'm hoping because I just, I feel like, you know, our, as parents, our, our children are clearly a reflection of us. So I think that you should be just so proud. Thing. that's very kind of you to say thank you uh we did not agree to participate in this film with the goal of anything beyond helping to share our family story our dad's story my mom's story um mm. you know if, if people think we're great that's great but uh as you said it's a reflection of our upbringing yeah yeah definitely and so we're, we're we're honored but uh it's about them <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's very humble of you, but, um, what do you, what do you feel is one of the most important lessons that your, your parents taught you and, and taught the world? Well, I think two, uh, one comes from my mom. She always said, you have to give more than you take from this world. Um, and she lived her life according to that principle. And I try to do that. I think uh, I'm desperately human, so I don't always <laughs> achieve those lofty goals of giving more than I take. But um, I, I learned through example, mm -hmm. if not through direct instruction, that if you have the ability to help other people, you have a moral obligation to do so. That's how my parents lived their life. Yeah. Um, and what I learned from my dad uh he came ultimately to a definition of what makes a hero that has stuck with me for years. It's a hero is an ordinary individual who finds the strength to persevere and endure in spite mm. of overwhelming obstacles. And that is the Christopher Reeve story. That is the Dana Reeve story. Uh, they were ordinary people confronted with overwhelming obstacles. They found the hero within. Um, yeah. And I think something I'm incredibly proud of this documentary that's out in theaters now is that anyone can be a hero by that definition because we're all just ordinary individuals. We're all just human with flaws and faults and shortcomings. Yeah. Um, and yet, when we are faced with overwhelming obstacles, we can find that strength. And I, that I hope that audiences around the world will take that away uh, because I learned that in my own life and I certainly learned it again in this film. Well, thanks a lot. I'm crying. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, I'm half kidding, but really, that's that's really powerful. And, you know, I, I know that you don't quite recall everything because you were so young, but I'm just wondering if you can look back and, and think and just feel how the whole shift impacted your family and impacted the dynamic after uh, your father was, was paralyzed. Sure. I mean, look, I, I didn't get nearly as much time with my dad uh, overall that, that I would have wanted. Of course, I wish he were still here. He'd be 72 now. Um, but I, I also certainly didn't get enough time with him before his accident. But I never have, I've never felt shortchanged um, in terms of uh, my time with him or my lessons learned from him. And I, I credit my parents for creating a life at home within our family that was not centered around the fact that dad was in a wheelchair and couldn't do the stuff physically that he wanted to do. Yeah. Um, yes, there were limitations and difficulties and considerations to be made about daily life that people not impacted by paralysis don't have to think about. Mm -hmm. But what I recall from my childhood is a life of activity and joy and optimism and laughter and everything that one would hope for in a childhood. It was a, it was a place of love and 
support and encouragement and safety. And uh, my parents really made an effort to make life as normal as possible. And I believe they succeeded. And I'm so grateful for that. Yes. And, and were there any stories or moments about your father that you felt were crucial to include in the documentary? I know you said you didn't really have much to do with, uh, you know, the making of it, but was there anything that you were like, no, you have to say this? I, th- we, well, we, we didn't do any of the, you have to say this stuff because we were intent as a trio, my, my brother and sister and I on giving the filmmakers autonomy to make the film that they felt they needed to make. And we were mm-hmm. just there to support it and fill in whatever blanks they needed us to. Okay. Um, but I'm so glad and we're, we're relieved and proud of the, the final result uh, because it's a work of art. It's cinematic. It's big and expansive and important and beautifully told. Uh, but I think every element of our dad's life is, is included in there. And it's, it's hard to condense such a big, impactful life into an hour and 45 minutes, but they've done a great job, the filmmakers have. Um, yeah. I think the fact that his, his advocacy was included is very important. He was an advocate for many causes before he was ever injured. Uh, his sense of adventure. He was always on the move, flying and scuba diving and riding horses and playing tennis and skiing, and that's all in there. And he was a man deeply in love with his family and deeply in love with his work and also struggled with how to balance those two things and didn't always get it right. And we were intent on showing the humanity in his story of him just struggling to do a little bit better every day. Mm. And that is the experience. Wow. I'm gone. I'm so excited to see this. Uh, and I have to let you go, but just my one last question. I know that, uh, your father was roommates with Robin Williams at, uh, in college. And I'm just wondering, did you, uh, did you see Robin Williams as a child? I mean, I'm sure you don't remember, but was he, uh, All the time. He's Robin. You... yeah, we, we spent so much time with Robin and his wife, Marsha and their kids. And we're still close today, uh, with Marsha and the kids. Um, and we wow. miss Robin every day. It's just a part of our lives. It was our dad's best friend. And Marsha and my mom became best friends. So we did family vacations. And if we were ever in the same city, we would have family dinners. And like that continues to this day uh, with Marsha and, Marsha and the kids. Um, so, you know, the world thinks it's amazing. Like the Robin Williams of it all, capital R, capital W, is mm. exciting. And it is. Yeah. But to us, he was just Robin, was our dad's friend. Wow. Uh, beautiful. It was more like a brotherhood than anything else. Oh my gosh. That's so great. Well, talking to you has really made my morning. Will. thank you so much. And how can people watch the documentary? Got to go to theaters. It's in theaters, October 11th, nationwide, worldwide. Like this is a cinematic film. It needs to be seen on the big screen. There's a great score, beautiful imagery. Like it, it, our dad would have wanted this to be in theaters and it is. So yes. sorry, you can't sit on the couch and watch it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> schedule. You got to go to theaters, get out there, get your popcorn, maybe some candy, big soda or water, yes. whatever. Get out there, see it in theaters to support your local theater. Well, that's so wonderful to hear. I love going to theaters, so I'm there. But Will Reeve, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you. That was Will Reeve. If that didn't make your day, I don't know what will. Uh, It was so nice to just take a little break from murder and crime and speak to someone like Will who just, gosh, he lost his parents at such a young age. And again, I cannot imagine what that's like and what he went through. But he seems like an incredible person. And I wish I could have spoken to his siblings, Alexandra and Matthew as well. Matthew is the oldest and Alexandra is in the middle, but hopefully one day. But don't forget to go see the movie. It's in theaters October 11th. I'm going to see it. I love going to movie theaters, so this is not a thing for me. But again, I wish I had a screener before I interviewed him, but that's okay. All right, guys, if you like this podcast, don't forget to rate and subscribe on Apple. And I'm going to stop talking before I keep rambling and say something I regret. (laughs) Just kidding. I'm Lauren Conlon. Thanks for listening.